A phasing of darkness gave way to a slow monotone phasing of blurred grey. All available colours appeared vague and uneventful, with little in the way of zest or opulence. Gradually, the blurs became refined to shapes, their lines and corners becoming refined over a long duration of time, the self-reflective sound of breathing becoming evident as the person came to. With a rising consciousness, what appeared to be an aching migraine came into the fray, followed by a half-awakened groan as if acknowledging the pain. The person couldn't remember what had happened. Come to think of it, they couldn't recall where the hell they were. There had been something going on, followed by what appeared to have been an endless sleep. The person groaned again before gasping, as if trying to catch air from a bad dream or a hangover. Opening their eyes, Verg finally began to concentrate, his mind finally stringing together a coherent line of thought. The colour of the refined vision gazed upon what appeared to be a narrow room, its contents encumbered by a bland ochre, further decorated by adjacent lines which every now and then moved in a grid pattern. A neon turquoise light lined across the side wall, halting at what appeared to be a flat door, its surface completely flat with no sign of any lock or sensor. Sighing, the man hefted the weight of his body up before a pain shot through the side of his abdomen. Grasping it, he held in place for a couple of seconds before realising something felt wrong. Where flesh had been a surface was something, though firm, soft enough to the skin. Moving the hand away, he realised what the issue had been. Surrounding his midsection were rows of bandages, about two or three layers deep, enough to suggest there had been bruising and perhaps some bleeding, but experience dictated that, comparatively at least, it had been on the lighter side of injuries. The room's light was subtle enough not to cause irritation, a noticeable difference from the cramped containers that had been his barracks for the months of transit through the warp. Trying to swallow, the cleanliness of his breath was a far difference from the tinge of copper, which had more or less been the norm since he had decided to join his local regiment to escape the hive he had lived on. There had been a running theme throughout his life that suggested all was not what it seemed to be, the clean water was never truly clean. The breathable air was never truly unpolluted. The rations had always never been quite tangible enough to be recognised as edible. Something seemed entirely different, as if the long rest had given way to something which felt a bit more real. Managing to bring himself to sit up, Verg looked down at himself. Yep, he was injured all right, enough to keep him out of action anyway in his place wherever this place was. Topless, his chest and arms displayed the lean musculature that only came with experience. There was a certain kind of toughness that, though was not obvious at first glance, came with the baggage of having been a hive ganger followed by a guardsman. Blue and black intricate tattoos decorated his chest, some patterned while others nonsensical, at least to an outsider anyway. A gaunt face, the somewhat elongated shape was decorated with a Roman nose, a pair of narrow eyes, a plain jaw, and the beginnings of a stubble. Verg had never quite been anything special like many of his colleagues. Special was reserved for Astartes, Kazakin, and planetary governors. Indeed, he had been one of unnamed trillions who toiled away, invisible to most important people. In the grand scheme of things, Verg's life would be irrelevant, a single word in an entire lexicon a million pages long, his significance a grain in the deserts of Talan. Emperor. The man managed to mutter before falling short. Despite the long sleep, he felt exhausted, as if being unconscious had only prolonged his fatigue. Come to think of it, where in Cadia's name was he? Verg tried to think, well more than he usually did. What appeared in his mind was ambiguous, a series of disjointed flashes and snapshots he couldn't quite make out. Regardless of how he tried to think, nothing seemed to make any sense. He had some vague notion. He had been stationed on a backwater in the middle of nowhere on the eastern fringes, something akin to glorified garrison duty, but after, things went dark. 
Combing his other hand through his short buzz cut, he muttered to himself something about the Ides of Savant Witches, a turn of phrase in his local dialect, before he tried to stand. Trying to swallow again, he finally noticed the dryness of his lips. Looking to the left, his amber eyes gazed upon what appeared to be a sink, above it a small mirror. Sluggishly, he moved towards it, almost dragging his body along, as if the presence of his body's mass was weighing him down. Reaching it, the distance was just short enough of his utilitarian bed, the sink conveniently close enough, so all that was required was the person slightly lean forwards. Verg did just that, and trying to find the tap moved his hand around. The side of a tap head with no workable device to operate the supply of water perplexed him. In the Emperor's name, this fetting sink! Drawing a hand to it, he traced around the sterilised design absolved of any angles until his hand moved under it. Suddenly, water spurted out as if the thing had come to life. Stopping abruptly, all Ver could do was stare at the contraption. No Imperial facility of any ship he had ever seen contained anything like what he just saw. Tempting the device again, he waved his hand under and once again the tap sprang to life clear water running down before stopping abruptly again the moment he moved his hand away. Verg had seen many things in his life, some he would rather not talk about. However, one thing that always came to mind was a certain tinge or shade that was slightly off when it came to water, as if the thing was never truly clean. The water that exited from the tap head was something entirely different. It was... clear clearer than anything he had seen before in his life. In a world of drab browns, greys and questionable nourishment for his lean body, it seemed so natural, as if it came from a mountain world he had heard about in hearsay. A final time, this time more slowly, he brought a hand underneath, the water from the tap smoothly pouring down in a placid manner. It felt cold but pure. Cupping an amount in his hand, Verg brought it to his mouth. The moment the liquid touched his lips and stained his taste buds, the difference couldn't have been more self-evident. For the first time in Verg's life, the clean drinking water stood in stark contrast to the metallic taste that had been etched into his taste buds since he had been named Verg by his mother, with little thought for a surname. His sense of taste lashed out, sensing that this was more different than anything he could have imagined. Instinctively, the man bent down and bringing his head near the tap head, he began to gulp as much water as he could, nearly choking halfway through. There had been almost a buttress of the metallic taste from a lifetime of usage, but somehow this began to give way. Looking up, Verg's eyes focused before they finally came across a somewhat unrecognisable sight, causing the person to back away slightly. The long face was bruised, swelling evident in his right eye. The blackening of it had somewhat faded, showing the transition between injury and recovery. Slight swelling showed near his left jaw, which, now being noticed, began to hurt. What the hell had happened? He had been in that backwater when... That was it! He had been garrisoned as part of a mop-up crew before his bastion had been attacked, and... And... Verg exhaled a depressed sigh. The image is still arising in his mind. It had been unexpected, and all the entrenchments and defences and shoring up gaps in manpower had come to naught. What he could remember of the flashes and shock had been sudden, discriminatory and extreme. Images of missiles, their trail waving and manoeuvring as they dodged and twisted, had been something he could have only dreamed was part of the Primarchs or the Mechanicum's arsenal. Those things... Those giant things had swarmed onto their position like flies, overwhelming their entrenchments with sheer firepower before moving on to the next position. The retreat had been sudden, if not unexpected, and all surviving guardsmen had made their way into the heart of the bastion. Taking up position, he had become a slugfest as room after room was cleared, the screams only being pounded by the sound of grenades, las fire, and swept of plasma fire. He had been in the headquarters, at the uppermost levels of the bastion, taking position around a heavy boulder with a few other stragglers. 
They had all seen action, but this was something different entirely. He had seen Merox against Ganghivers, and Monodus against Orc pirates or cultist infestations at Jerox Prime. This enemy was swift, they were organised, and more importantly of all, they were advanced. The neon blue glows illuminated the opening in the corridor they had dug in on. There had been contact, and after what seemed like a few hours, they had finally been overrun. There had been visions of various humanoid things, each illuminated by the same neon blue before everything had finally faded into black. Ugh, my feathin' head! The migraine had been a mundane lingering before it began to pick up where it was noticeable enough to be annoying. It wasn't the first time and it wouldn't be the last time, but every time it hurt like a bottle of Amzac in Froman's bar, bringing back a memory of when he got bottled in said bar that he would otherwise forget as the heel gash on his chest reminded him. With the realisation of where he likely was, begrudgingly, he looked around. The entire cubicle was sanitised, so clean you could wipe your ass with it. Not a spot of dirt seemed to blemish the ochre walls and white floor. Emperor knows where Virg was, and, if he was where he thought he was, there was no stopping the potential torture he'd have to go through. That's what the commissars and officers had told him. Exhaling a depressed sigh and realising the game was up, Virg resided to his fate. A sudden change drew his attention away from his thoughts. A soft chine drabbed on, followed by the seemingly sealed plain door leisurely sliding open. The silhouette that formed an outline in the doorway was dark. The light from the outside world calling Virg to shield his eyes with his forearm as he turned to the direction of the entrance. Entering, the figure moved in, the same neon blue light emitting from his helmet. The shape of the figure wasn't particularly imposing, and appeared not to be threatening, as they slightly stepped to the side of the cell door. Verg looked down, and keeping neutral, refused to acknowledge the figure that came in. A series of echoes voiced in what appeared to be a vox, before bringing their hand to the side of their helmet, Toggled it off by pressing a button. Sorry, we tend to be a bit occupied. Military work, am I right? The voice seemed distorted because of the helmet, concealing the individual's face. Ver continued to try and ignore the man. Oh, the helmet, right? Sorry. Bringing the hand down to their head, they unsealed the helmet before removing it, revealing their face. Verd glanced before doing a double take, the person's face revealing itself to be eerily familiar. He was a human, at least he appeared to be. His clean, beardless face displayed a subtle button nose, a pair of noticeable dimples and a pattern of freckles, the face underneath brown hair which had been combed backwards. You're... you're human. I... I am... surprised... The man shot a grin as if the whole affair had been a light tug, a punchline to an unexpected joke. Virg stayed frozen in place before, remembering his position, looked down, refusing to make eye contact. As if understanding the signal, the man stepped forwards. Brown fatigues covering his body, it was further protected by the same ochre-coloured breastplate, small pauldrons, more for stability than protection, leg and shin guards. What appeared to be a pistol hung at his side. Compared to the average guardsman, the whole deal seemed a bit more comfortable as well as protective. As if consideration had been given to the man's build. Ah no, you don't seem to worry about telling me anything lad. I'm not going to hurt you. We don't do that sort of thing. Do you hear me lad? Refusing to respond, Verg kept silent, keeping his head down. Thinking for a second, the man's face lit up. Ah, I know what'll make you see. Drawing up the sleeve of his arm, Verg curiously looked up, his eyes widening at the sight. It was an Aquila, the sign of the Imperium decorated on his forearm, as it did many guardsmen, the series of coded numbers underneath displaying his position and rank. You, you are a, a guardsman? Yes, was stationed quite a while and then things changed, don't you know? Ver could only express amazement. 
the look of wanton curiosity displaying on his face like a vox pick. I... I know that regiment. I served with them. The man looked down, as if double-checking that the tattoo on his arm was correct. He chuckled. The Halix Highlanders, light infantry and scouting. Took many places for the artillery and infantry. Well, that was before. Raising his arms, his hands palm open, he gestured down to himself humorously. Looking at the uniform only made Verg realise the gravity of the situation, and soon the curious face turned to anger. Looking down, he refused to speak once again. Ah, don't kid yourself, lad. I used to feel the same way, don't you know? Traitor. Filthy traitor. Verg looked up, his face expressing a mixture between anger and disgust. Heretic. Scum. Heretic? Heretic, you say? The man's voice rose, almost breaking an octave from the defensive tone. It was clear the man had taken the comment to heart. I'll have you know there's no heresy here, boy oh, not on my watch anyway. Bring up a hand, it moved around his neck and rummaging for a few seconds, he revealed the trinket. Connected by a chain surrounding his neck, it was just visible enough to make out. Verg's mouth opened. The, the Emperor protects. Ah, it does, boy oh, I can tell you that. The Emperor indeed does protect. Making the sign of the Aquila, as if running like clockwork, Verg instinctively returned the gesture. Like a deer in the headlights, Verg stared in silence, unsure what to do. I... I, I can't talk to you. Pausing for a second, the man squatted down, trying to lower himself to the same level as the former guardsman. And why not? Are we not talking now? Verg was lost for words. He had a point. They'd been talking... And, for all intents and purposes, he was fraternising with the enemy. Still, a flash in his mind reminded him of the situation he was in, and, more importantly, what the implications were for Imperial prisoners who fraternised with Xenos lovers. I... I know you're kind. The man brought both hands to his chest, chuckling as he gestured. What? Me? Yes, you. Don't play stupid with me. I know what you lot are like, Xenos lovers. At that moment in time, Ver's conviction appeared as strong as any fortified wall of dawn. He had read the manuals, well the ones he was provided with anyway, as much as he could anyway. Reading hadn't been his strong point, something he had to embrace a long time ago. He had been told time and time again about the Tau and what their species stood for. Backwards. Inferior. Weaker in stature and hard of aiming. Then again, for being supposedly backwards, they sure did pack quite a punch. I've heard what you lot are like, what your so-called ethereals do. Almost cocking his head back, the man bellowed what appeared to be laughter. Oh, really, do you? And who told you that? Sergeants, commissars, administratum. I used to be in the guard, boy, oh. I've heard it all I have. Staring at Verg for a few seconds, he continued, Oh, come now. You don't know what they're like. Let me guess. Can't shoot a fetting barn animal. Can't swing a knife for shit. Ruled by a bunch of uncaring twats who relegate us to cannon fodder. Once you've been in the guard, you've heard it all. The man then gestured to himself, Look at me. Do I look like cannon fodder to you? Verg looked up. The man did look well kept. Well more than he could say about his time in the guard. If bad uniform didn't result in corporal punishment. Oh yeah? What about Dalith? What do you mean, what about Dalith? This time Verg looked upwards, his eyes matching the man's turquoise ones. The stare was long and deep, enough to look into a man's soul. The reaction was unexpected. The man slightly leaning back, not expecting the sudden look of contempt. You know exactly what I mean. You've probably heard what happened, what your ethereals did to Imperial citizens. Everyone had heard what happened on Daylith. At first it had been a rebellion, an outlier full of non-compliant ex-Imperials who weren't happy about the whole situation concerning being a buttress against the Imperium. 
They had rebelled, and with that came the Iron Fist wrapped in a velvet glove. There had been a few survivors on Daylith, and what they said didn't sound good. Mass camps and sterilization had left many desolate, as if their souls had left, leaving empty husks of bodies remaining. The ecclesiarchy and commissariat made the whole affair very apparent, and every guardsman being shipped to the eastern fringe knew very well what they were getting themselves into. Slightly leaning forwards, the man matched Verg's gaze and staring broke the silence. Say, let me ask you a question, guardsman. Since you believe you are so smart, had the same situation happened against the Imperium, what do you believe would have happened? You've probably dealt with a few rebellions in your time, have you not? Verg was lucky enough not to deal with any major rebellions in his service. A few pirates here, a cultish mingling there. Hive Zen Prime had been a different story though. He had seen what the Imperials did when traitors became a subject matter, and just counted himself lucky he had not been on either the end of the firing line. Verg kept silent, his mind in contemplation. Look, I'll be honest with you, it's not perfect. Nothing is if you think about it, but this is far better than being in some shithole somewhere in a forgotten hive, or having to charge a trench line with some commissar at the back with a bolt pistol. Ugly things do happen, but if you gave me a choice, I'd rather be at the place where my hands are less dirty. Though still serious, Verg slightly lightened up. For all his experience in the guard, no one, neither officer or comrade, had spoken to him in that way. There was a certain kind of empathy to the whole affair, something that had been lacking when he had served in the guard. Here, school chap, let me sit next to you. Hesitantly, either out of injury or because he felt forced to, Verg moved slightly, letting the slightly taller man sit next to him. Do you see that over there? The man gestured to the now open jaw, the sight giving way to a corridor of sanitized wipe. You're free to leave whenever you feel like it. I mean it. You can get up and walk out and nobody will stop you. That is, if you're reasonable. A smirk animated on the man's face. Emperor, I mean, I wasn't even ordered to come and talk to you. Verg's eyes widened at the sentence. You weren't. Oh, Feth, no. I wanted to come and see how you are. They brought your body back from the infirmary. To be honest, I hadn't seen another human outside the regiment for some time. It was a breath of fresh air, mind you. They had to keep you here, of course, to monitor you. Either that, or so you didn't do anything crazy. There was a pause of silence, both men looking ahead. Ver could only stare, at a loss of what to say. Was the man really trying to say he wasn't a prisoner? That he could just go? Several questions finally popped into his mind. So? So what? Well, what about these ethereals I keep hearing about? It was a reasonable question. After all, that was always the main point which had been hammered since Ver had been shipped to the Eastern Fringe. Or them. They're honestly not much to talk about. Personally haven't met them, to be honest, and the Tao tend to keep to themselves unless you start trouble. You see, where we are is the most outward sphere, and unless shit begins to sink, you'll never see any of them. I mean, they show vox pics, but that's mainly about it. So I don't care, the man gestured with his hands. I mean, that's one way to put it. They're a bit more anal with their own, have their own caste system and all of that, but they're not allowed to breed outside of that. Technically, I'm part of their fire caste by being a soldier myself, but honestly, there's no imperative to not sleep with any lass who doesn't want it. Chuckling, Verk hadn't expected the last part. I mean, it's pretty cosy, and they generally let Guela, meaning us, deal with our own affairs. No priest pushing down your throat 24-7. A good bloody deal if you ask me. Do you want to know how I got here? The question hadn't entered Verg's mind, though it was a good one. Turning his head to face the man for the first time, he gave a nod to say he didn't. We'd been tracking a bunch of pathfinders in the ruins. Got smoked with plasma fire, and before we knew it, we were overrun. Wasn't able to see the bastard's face until it was too late. Then I see them. 
they appear out of thin air, and before I had the time to say, Emperor, bless my heart, they had wiped out my squad and seized myself. Got a lovely scar to show for it. Rolling up his sleeve, his arm revealed what appeared to be a burn mark, indicating the plasma had just missed its mark, but close proximity had been a bitch. Thought I was done for until they brought me here, nursed me back to health, and then asked if I wanted to join. At that point in time, I would have probably been dead otherwise, so I said, sign me up. The Tau sergeant seemed to have a good sense of humour, because he laughed his ass off at the remark. A funny fella, I tell you. Another lull of silence. Looking down, Verg gestured to the man's pistol. That thing work? Oh, you don't want to be on the receiving end of this thing, boy I tell you as much. It's a much better deal fighting for these lot. That bloody flak armor fits, and their rifles punch pretty much through anything. If you keep your head down and joke around, they tend to want to keep your head with them. You've served with them. Served with them? I'm one of their sergeants. Well, the equivalent of it anyway. Sometimes they put us with other humans. Other times they mix us with them. Not a particularly sorry bunch. They tend to look after each other pretty well, get an aim assist and everything. Rate of fire is a bit of a pain, though. Gesturing to the pistol, he then knocked on his ochre-coloured cuirass with a knuckle. This thing saved my life more than I care to admit. None of that carapace is crap, and every soldier gets one. You'd be happy to know no trenches as well. Berg smiled slightly. That was good news. Say, would you like to go outside? Turning his head, Berg stared ahead at the opening to the corridor. Thinking to himself, a number of options popped into his mind. He could resist. He could very well kill the man beside him, take his pistol and try to escape. But then what? He would be gunned down like a rat, and even if he made it by the skin of his teeth, what would he do then? He knew what the deal would be if he were to be given back to Imperial hands. Escape seemed almost impossible. Then again, what would be the harm of saying yes? At best he would be a nobody on the outskirts somewhere in the middle of nowhere. At worst, how could it get any worse than being let out? Verg hesitated slightly, as if torn between two sides, the expression on his face expressing a disconcerting lack of decisiveness, his eyes darting slightly, as if trying to calculate a complicated equation in his mind. I'll be honest with you, I don't trust you or your Xenos friends, but I haven't really got a choice in the matter. A grin animated on the man beside him's face. That's good. I've always found that hope is always the first step on the road to disappointment. For the first time in a long time, Verg chuckled. Going outside had been a different experience entirely, and from the inside of the very monotonous ochre corridor gave way to a lush perimeter in an entirely different cityscape. Everything was spacious, the adobe coloured domes and large buildings having adequate amounts of preferable space, as if it had been completely designed with ergonomics in mind. The room he had been designated in has been spacious as well, with little last in return. He had been more than Verk had seen in his time growing up on a hive and then joining the guard. One thing had led to another and, with the past experience of soldiering in mind, he had made his choice. The firecast, or whatever it was called, had been eager, under the recommendation of the man who had led him out of his cell of his own free will. Oh, by the way, my name's Glithin, to be of service about you. The training had been a lot less harsh than before, and whether human or tau, there had been a sense of expectation instilled, which suggested it had been from the heart. The humans had seemed pretty keen, most of them were volunteers, whereas the tau... Well, that had been their birthright and duty. It hadn't been so much of a question of motivation as much as it had been one of qu unquestionable destiny. All the Tau revolved around their greater good. Verg learnt that much when Glithin had given credations to his superior. They had their opportunities for conversation when training had begun. Verg had initially not thought much of the equipment, but over time grew to like it. The pulse rifle was a pain when it came to raid of fire, but once you got used to it and knew the rhythm of the plasma, it ran like clockwork. Lasguns were reliable, but this thing never seemed to break down. 
Training had showed the prospects for talent, the Tao gifting the man the title of accurate shot in their own language. The term took some getting used to, Ver contemplating whether to use it as a surname he never had. See, the thing about the greater good is it's an ideal. And like all ideals, it's impossible to achieve. Just don't think about it too much and you'll be fine. Something equating a grin animated on Shio Lavar's mouth. What no one had told him was how sociable these bloody Tao were, backed up with a light sense of humour. Ver couldn't remember how often he had been able to crack a whip with his fellow guardsmen, though dark humour had helped everyone cope at the worst of times. There was something different about this though. It was more light-hearted and jovial. For some reason, it especially came out between the Tao and their Gwila counterparts. Shiolava had been especially understanding. Being a soldier all his life, he knew the hardships that came out of soldiering's line of work. It was baffling how many similarities both males shared, but if there was one thing that had always stood out to Verg, it was the officer's sense of honesty. In comparison, the Imperium appeared to be undeniably either cruel or fanatical when it came to words. If they weren't being twisted, for some end of course. Still, Something bit at the back of Verg's mind. Him and his squad had been practicing manoeuvres, the devilfish taking them from one simulated place to another. They had disembarked and broke off for a few minutes while everybody recuperated from their last training schedule. It wasn't too long before they'd be sent in rotation, a couple of weeks or so. Um, Sholava. Verg had some trouble pronouncing the officer's name, but just managed to pull it off. The officer turned. Ah, Gwela Verg, how can I be of service to you? Verg stood silent, as if deep in thought, the officer waiting to hear his response. There was a certain look of understanding on his face, as if everything would be okay in the end. Sure, Verg would never master the four-signal gesture of welcoming, but then again, he hadn't been expected to. That feeling seemed to permeate between him and Shiolavar. Ken... Can I have a word in private, if it's okay with you? The officer's face seemed light-hearted, though somewhat it shifted to concern. Of course, what do you want to speak about? Walking to the side, Sheolavar shadowed the man as he moved to an isolated part of the devilfish, his voice low. There's... there's something that's been playing on the back of my mind, and as soldiers, I wanted to talk to you about it. Of course, Verg. What do you need to tell me? The pronunciation of the man's name had seemed slightly off, the officer simply not used to the sound, though it was clear he was making an effort. When I was in the guard, we were told, well, you see, on Daylif there had been. Shoalavar stared at the man, first with a look of curiosity, before the realisation of what the former guardsman was talking about his eyes slightly widening. Well, it's just... We were told things. Spoke to people who had seen things. Verg hesitated again. He didn't want to come out and say it, his head down as if ashamed to say what he thought. All the Tao had done was accommodated him, and the conversation seemed like a slap to the face. Is any of it true? I was deployed on Dalith on that campaign. There was a silence, almost deafening compared to the noise of what was going on around them. We had been assigned to one of the camps when it happened. There were insurgents in the civilian ranks, and no one was able to tell the difference. I will say this, though. It's not as many people as you think. A couple of hundred, not the whole population. In the officer's tone, there was a certain tone of defeat, as if the Tao had resigned to his fate on that day when what had happened took place. Do, do you think it could have been prevented? I... I don't know. There were no easy answers in that situation. Another silence, this time longer. I... I sometimes think I know how you felt in that situation. Bringing his head up, Verg's eyes matched the towers. A warrior's life too? 
Looking down, Virg stared at his hands. The surface of the palms were wrinkled, as if a tattoo displaying his life. I've seen things, done things, been part of things. There had been occasions that Virg wished he couldn't remember. There was that time in Tikos, and then when he had witnessed the full display of a military unit unhinged. Things better left unsaid. A sudden presence was felt on the man's shoulder and looking up, he saw the fire warrior had placed a hand on it. A warrior sometimes needs to get his hands dirty, Guela, so everything around him may stay clean. Virg slightly chuckled from the quote. It was a weak argument, that was for sure, but something solid in those words resonated with him, in a part of his soul which had appeared to be a near constant. For the first time in a very long time, Virg felt a semblance of peace.